So the computer you see here is a $20,000 Lenovo ThinkStation P20. It's a very high-end machine learning machine. I frequently on this channel use a computer that I built that has a decently high-end GPU on it, although nothing compared to the two that are in this one. I use a Titan versus the Quadro RTX 8000s that are in this, considerably more RAM. But specs aside, because the two computers are sort of apples and oranges, let's look at sort of the engineering decisions and how I put together a computer as, I guess, a, a typical system builder. I don't consider myself to be an advanced system builder by any stretch, but I, I put it together of kind of the best parts available to me. So let's, let's take a look at what a OEM like Lenovo puts together compared to building it yourself. Building it yourself does require, I mean, you have to literally put, I don't know, $5,000 or so, maybe more worth of parts on your table and hope that you don't break anything putting everything together. Luckily for me, it's, it's mostly idiot proof, but sometimes you just want the machine out of the box to have the right drivers, everything sort of pre-configured for you and you can get down to machine learning. So let's compare the two systems and see how they're put together. So first let's start with the case. Now I will say this is something that I just really like about the Lenovo. First of all, this case is very, very solid. I mean, I, I may have thrown my back out by lifting it up onto my desk, but that aside, it's, it's very solid. It, there's a lot of room in there to put in the components. You can put three GPUs in here. Now, let's open up my computer and the Lenovo and compare kind of some of the engineering decisions that were made in terms of dealing with airflow and other things. First thing is just how do you open it? Well, you can take this computer almost completely apart without ever even using one of these. No screwdrivers really needed. Now, I could have possibly gotten something like this in a case on my own, but I haven't really seen this a lot. You basically just push the little button here, pop this guy out, and just like magic, your case is open. And I really, really like this. This is basically a little map of the inside of this computer. You're able to see all of the, the, the two CPUs, where the, the, the GPUs might sit, and just what is really everything. It gives you a guided map to this. Some motherboards will give you this, some won't. I wish the motherboard manufacturer that I used my own computer would have given me that. Also, once you have this open, there's all these red connector points, and those show you where the various components are that you can, that you can open. The first thing that you'll want to remove once you have this open, oh, and by the way, stick around until the end of the video if you want to see me put this thing back on. I did have a little more trouble putting it back on than actually taking it off, but once you know how to do it, it's, it's really quite, quite easy. This part here is essentially controlling airflow. So we can pull that off and it comes off quite easily. Now, this is another one of those pieces that you wanna remember, it's hinged right there. So you want to put it back into the hinge and snap it in, otherwise you're not gonna close the case. But you pull that off and this is essentially Airflow Director. This is really neat. I mean, this is custom made for this computer and this configuration of two GPUs, two CPUs. These are two Xenon Gold CPUs from Intel. See, the fans are pushing the air this direction that device I just removed guides it and it goes out the fan to the back. That really helps with the airflow for this machine. 
and allows the CPUs to really stay cool. Now the two GPUs are right there. So let me go ahead and open my computer and we're going to compare these two really side by side and just see what the insides of the cases look like. Now to open my computer, I'm going to have to use the screwdriver and uh, that's like opening any other case. Let's, I'm not going to sit, sit you through that. Let me go ahead, get these two side by side. So let's compare them side to side. Here we have the ThinkStation. Here we have my own creation. The ThinkStation, you can definitely tell it's longer. That can be good because you can get all of the drives set up there and you can put in very long GPU cards. They're going for, on the Lenovo, the ThinkStation, you can see there's two GPUs at the bottom. You could also put a third GPU at the top, however you couldn't really connect that with any sort of uh, NVIDIA link. Now this computer here is not set up with NVLink, by the way. Now let's talk about really the difference between a gamer computer and a machine learning workstation. So there's a lot of overlap, but there's one very, very big difference that many that I've, I've talked to who work in the GPU industry and also put these together in OEMs. And that is a gaming computer is a Sprint and a machine learning workstation is a Marathon. Both of these two computers are set up with that in mind. My computer here has air cooled, as does the ThinkStation. This is really designed to let it run 24 seven if need be. I think that the ThinkStation would do better overall. We'll see reasons for that for long-term run. The liquid cooled computers, there's just a lot of setup there and they look very cool. I, I went a bit crazy on RGB, just, I don't know, couldn't help myself blinging out the computer. So, but sadly, my really pretty RGB RAM is right behind this monster air-cooled fan that I have in there, which works really quite well. So while a gaming PC may run full bore for a couple of hours while you play a game or eight hours while you play a game, it's not necessarily going to need to run over long, long periods of time over multiple days. That's what will really break these computers down because heat is what will kill you on this kind of thing. My GPU is really just sitting here. Whereas on the ThinkStation, these two GPUs are actually connected to a bit of a heatsink here and have a dedicated fan that is handling the, the flow of the air around them. Now I can pop out this part. This is also another thing that is great about the, the ThinkStation all coming from one manufacturer. I need about three different screwdrivers to take this computer apart. Whereas here, you just pop on these red lines. I'm gonna pull this off. This channels for the two CPUs and you can see the CPUs here. These are Intel Xenon Gold. Now Xenon, you see those really more so on server class machines. They're all about temperature control and packing many, many, many computers into a data center. Now this computer is not in a data center. It's going to sit on a engineer or, or scientist's desk. However, you're using the same sort of CPU technology that you would see when you actually transfer this, say, up to a cloud compute environment. So it's, it's all the same. What you're running on your desktop is the same as what you're running in the server room. Most of these access points are just to get to different things like that can pop out and then I am able to access the, the screws to take those, those GPUs in and out. Those two GPUs are about five thousand, five to six thousand dollars a piece so I'm going to leave them where they're at. The air cooling will go pretty much here 
guided by that part that I took off to this fairly large fan that's right here. Now notice this, I can just pop this fan right out. I didn't have to unscrew anything, unplug anything, it's, it's there and it's, it's a sizable fan. And you can just pop it, and you can just pop it right back in there. Taking out one of the fans from the computer that I have there would be a lot more involved. I would also have to trace the wires through the, through the motherboard. Now my cabling, as you can see on my computer, is a, a little bit cringy. So yeah, definitely if you're Linus Tech Tips or Jay's Two Cents or one of those guys and you want to use, use my cabling as a cautionary tale, absolutely go for it. You're more than welcome. What really caused me considerable effort on that computer is the power supply, which is right here inside of this, this part of the case. Getting the power supply out of this case is really difficult. This is a modular power supply, but right here is where these, these cords come out. And this makes it really kind of difficult to do real, I mean, I'm not even sure what I could do with that cable to, that's giving my Titan its, uh, its power capability, its power supply. If I wanted to take that power supply out of there and I don't know, swap it out for another one, something such as that, that would be an hour, maybe longer because I would have to take all of these modular connections, pull them out of the power supply and then, and believe me, it is really torqued in there. Uh, it's, it, it, would be, it would be an interesting challenge to get that out. The power supply on the ThinkPad is right here. And it's a sizable power supply. It's over a thousand watts. How hard is it to take this out? Oh, I do have to unplug it. It didn't have electricity going to it anyway, but... And you pop it right out. There's the monster of a power supply that this thing has. But it's all connected right there and there. It's... This is so modular. You could service this thing and... And that's also how the warranty works for this as well. They send somebody to your, to your location and whatever's going to be, be broken in this, they're just going to pop something out and, and replace it. Another thing, I have been considering putting another hard drive onto this, onto my computer for a while. There are two of those M2 slots that are available. This one right here, I can get to without having to do major surgery on this computer. The other one, the one that I, that is actually closer to the CPU, which probably is the one that I should have used. I do have this one filled. I chose this slot just because I still have access to it. But if I wanted to put in that second hard drive, which I'm going to be doing because I would like to set this up in a dual boot Linux situation. It truly saddens me, but I would have to take out the GPU and the heat sink for the, for the CPU. So that would be a decent surgery. Uh, and also some of these cables are going sort of behind the, the GPU just to try to do a little bit of cabling. This area is what I, I don't know, I need to, I need to watch uh, Jay's Two Cents and really see what, I, see what I can do. Some of these are just hard though. This big cable here goes to the power supply and this thing is thick and it goes right to the motherboard. Do you have any suggestions for me on how to, how to maybe tuck some of these, these guys in? I might do another uh, another pass at this this stuff down here. I that's yeah that's just laziness. But the the Think Station yeah there's just I don't even know where half the cables are on that. When I'm looking at it, I can't can't really see them. But they're there now for the hard drive. Since mine is buried, the hard drive for this one is actually quite easy to get to. Basically mount them into this, put it and
and you're good to go. It's additional spaces for hard drives up here and other locations. You could get a serious RAID array going inside of this computer and that's just the, uh, that's just some of the case features. So I would say the real advantage to buying a pre-built computer like this is you have a lot of components that are well thought out, go together and the case and airflow control were built very much around the components that were chosen for this computer. Heating is just not going to be an issue. If the manufacturer does it right, the GPU should not be throttling, the CPU should not be throttling, which is something I've had to make a few adjustments on my own computer really to deal with. I don't do a lot of full bore 24 seven data science on my at home computer. So because of that, the system that I have does tend to work out pretty well for me. But if you're looking at really keeping these things running 24 seven, even at the price point that this computer is as configured, I'm showing you that there, that's a big price tag, but accessing this kind of compute power from the cloud, you're gonna pay for this relatively quickly. Also, you simply cannot get some of the GPU memory sizes that you can deal with. I mean, the, as you can see, the amount of memory on these two RTX 8000s that this machine has is quite massive. Would, if I wanted to access the RAM on my creation here, I would have to, again, remove this very large air cooler that I have. So there are some of the comparisons I made with my own attempts at building a computer. And this computer really works quite well for my uses. Now I am not an expert system builder and that's not even the topic of my, my YouTube channel. Do you see any things as I talked about my own system here that you would uh, tell me to do better or differently? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and if you want to see more from this computer as I put it to use on my channel or all things machine learning and deep learning then please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. All right, did you stick around all the way to the end to see this? This is how to put this thing back together. It's not hard if you know what you're doing and initially I did not. The first thing to do to put this thing back together is the airflow thing. Don't just put it right in, otherwise it's, it's gonna, it needs to, it's a hinge and it needs to connect over there and then you can pop it right back in and everything is flush. You wanna make sure that is flush or this guy is not going to connect. Now, to do this, first of all, don't try to put it on upside down like that. That will not work. You don't need this little thing popped in or out. I was... You don't need this little thing popped out. That was one thing that I initially toyed with. And then you just want to align it pretty close to there, uh, yeah. So there's a little crease right here that you feel like it's all nice and snug and then you push it forward and then let this thing out and grab it back in and it's back. Yeah, that took me 10 minutes the first time. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel if you want to watch how I make use of this awesome computer for about a month and a half. And all things AI and deep learning I cover on this channel. Thanks and consider giving this video a like.